Started with the, the master thesis of three. Started some calculation of our and understood that this is related to this duality. Okay, so, uh, so what about uh, uh, how duality? So, quantum how duality? So, before I say that, I, I want to give some kind of explicit description of two descriptions of the fundamental representation of UQ of DNN, two descriptions. Of this Q deformed representation of DNN or UQ of SLN, let's say SLN because we define it for them. And uh, so the first description is what we started to do in the exercises uh, yesterday. It is that you, uh, you view it as a quotient of V. And now I, I will use a slightly different convention of where the evaluation point is, k plus 2, maybe k here. So, so the, the important thing is, as we saw yesterday, is that the, the ratio between subsequent uh, spectral parameters is Q squared. And so yesterday we had, I don't know, Z and Q, Z and Q squared Z, but you can shift it a little bit. It's more symmetric. So I'm using the convention of Dante Ocado, who computed the R matrix for exterior power flow of the vector representation. So, uh, namely, uh, so this if you is a spectral. If you have a generic spectral parameter, this was also an exercise, at least in the equal one case. If you have a generic uh, spectral parameter, the tensor product is irreducible. But if you have this special combination, then you get uh, uh, submodules, as we saw yesterday in the in the, uh, in the exercises, and and this is so. So by the submodule, uh, of uh, uh, generated by, by the image of R uh, I, I plus 1 of Q squared or Q inverse, I always forget. So this is uh, analog to the description of the, ex of the exterior power as, as a quotient of the submodule generated by vectors which contain something like Vi, Vj, plus Vj, Vi. Here you have to insert the Q as we saw yesterday, but that is basically the story. Okay, so in, in yesterday we had only R12, but in general you have this sum. Uh, and, and so this is... Uh, and then the second uh, representation is just that, that you say that the QK of VZ is a usual uh, power, exterior power, as a vector space. So this is a simpler description, but we will need both. Uh, and then you give the action, and so with the, with the, with the usual, the Q equal 1 action of the generators of EI and FI. And of course, uh, you would say it doesn't work because the, the, the bracket between FI and FI should not be the usual one, but it should be Q. But Q, K, uh, uh, 
that's key. And, and the remark is again the same that we had before, is that uh, we get that HI is equal to EI FI is actually equal to uh, Q uh, KI, what it should be, KI and KI inverse Q. Since the eigenvalues of HI are in a minus one, zero, one. So, so this expression is the same. So, uh, and, and so one can show that these are really isomorphic, but one has to say again maybe what, so, so this would be for I equal one to N minus one. But to have the affine case, I have to say something about, about the 0 and F0. But it is the same, actually. But the, the, the useful thing to do it is to use this fermionic uh, representation. So, so in terms of fermionic operators. So we had this psi i star, which was wedge product with i in the, in the description of this as polynomials. Is this wedge, uh, wedge or lambda qv also an algebra, like, like differential forms, or, or not, if you deformed? Uh, is this an algebra? I think so, it's not yeah. Yes, yes, it's an algebra. So right, so you can, in this, def well, yeah, so, yes, in, so in, in, yeah, yeah, it is an algebra, because you can, you can take, so, so it's an algebra, uh, so for, for the algebra structure, you don't care about the affine part, so you can forget about the z's, and, and find as, as, as a sub, as an algebra generated, it, as a the quotient of the tensor algebra by the, uh, by the image of the, mm -hmm. uh, so it is automatic. So, so you divide a, an algebra by an idea, and it is an algebra. And in the second description, is it just, does it not see Q somewhere in this algebra? In the commute, uh, the generators of the algebra, and I think that's, that's the only relations we have. Sorry? Q and the commutation of the generators is enough. So, well, so this is the quotient of tensor algebra by these relations. The yeah. generators Q and T commute. Yeah, so I think it's, so it's, you say that it's isomorphic, it's independent of It's considered also the symmetric uh, quantum symmetric algebra, so it should be the same. OK, right. But uh, so maybe this goes into different ways. So this is D over theta i, and then you have this canonical anti commutation relations. So this would be the anti commutator is delta ij and the psi commute. So this is so seen also in uh, Matthias' uh, lecture. And uh, so then you have a, a way to represent the action of the generator, which is psi i star, psi i plus 1. Fi is psi i plus 1 star psi i, and this is we saw also in uh, yes and Sid explained us that the commutation variations of this type of quadratic expression the fermions give us a representation of, uh, of algebras, of Lie algebras. And, uh, and then uh, uh, Ki. So this is for i from 1 to n minus 1. And ki, maybe I will write it. So it will be ti over ti plus 1. And ti. So remember, here we had also this kind of number uh, operator, which have an eigenvalue 0 or 1. Um, Fermion number operator, and so Ti would be Q to the Ni. That has, depending on the eigenvalue, is Q times uh, I I star. So, 
So, so this is a kind of explicit formulas, and this is all for i from one. This is also for all i from zero to n minus one, and then this zero has a spectral parameter. So it's again psi uh, n star psi one and then zero of this, so you have psi 0, psi 1, psi n. And here you can introduce the spectral parameter, your z, and here your z minus, the minus 1. Okay, so this is an explicit description, and, uh, and you have the, the two, uh, two representations. So the first uh, description is useful if you want to compute the R matrix for pairs of, uh, of such exterior powers. This was done by Date Okado. And namely, you use the fusion procedure. You, you, kind of, you use the quasi-triangularity. I will come to that later. But, and the second description is more useful for the how-do duality. And so maybe we start from the how duality. In any case, one can prove that the two are the same by, I don't know, for instance, comparing the highest to it. So let's do the called quantum how do I skew So there is some literature on these things. So there is Pierre Beaumont, is one place where he discusses how do I it in the quantum case. And uh, and also in the, the people who are doing uh, Categorification are interested in these things. How did Joel Kennitzer TZ, I guess, and Tony Licata? So let me give the description in a way we understand it. So, uh, so we take this equal to L and W equal to Cn. And, and then we have, in the classical case, we, we take this. V times W. And we have an action of V on, of, of, of the L capital N on B, and a, an action of, capital, of GL small n on W. And they commute, and you have simple uh, spectrum, namely, uh, so they are a commutant of each other, and, um, right, and then now we want to do uh, a version of this, and the idea is, is very simple, so we have, first we, uh, we have two isomorphisms, so this is isomorphic, Product, but the isomorphism uh, depends on the choice of an ordered basis of W. So you write W equal to uh, C E1 plus C E N. Maybe you should use other letters because E I is already occupied. But anyway, so this V would be uh, secretly V times E1. And this P will be V Vx. So this is this. So if you take the uh, k1 up to kn exterior power, as we saw yesterday, we will get a weight space for the action of GL of, of the torus of GL small n, which corresponds to this decomposition. So you these again values. And of course, it is also equal to uh, Wh w. W and here you have capital N factors and here you have small n factors. And um, so it means that, so here you have a diagonal action of UQ of LN given by the coproduct. So we know how it acts here and then we use the coproduct. And we have an action of uq of 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 the l also given by the coproduct okay 
And the, the claim is uh, the actions commute and for q equal to 1 they become the usual action. So this is the action of, of the two algebras. Uh, on after you do this isomorphic on the tensor W. Okay, so maybe I, I sh here I switched a little bit to capital N. It is convenient to keep track of of the, of the weight components. And what is uh, UQ of G capital N? I introduced it implicitly here. So, uh, so, so for UQ. Actually, this for the, real, the loop algebra, so it means capital N, which is uh, UQ of uh, uh, the uh, hat with, uh, with level zero. Uh, so it's, it's generated by, uh, by uh, generated. By e i f i as before, and and then p i uh, with the obvious, more or less obvious com uh, uh, commutation or relations, and then the k i t i i plus one, and the SLN is a, the least subalgebra which is quantum group, which is uh, sub the subalgebra generated by e i f i and, and k i. We have this central element additional, and it's useful to keep track of it. And, uh, and now, so how to see this? Well, this would also be useful for, for later. The way I see it is by expressing this uh, in kind of fermionic terms. So, uh, Right, so, so the action of, uh, so more, more, pre more explicitly, so the action of, say, EI, so, so maybe I, I will, uh, so, the, as a gener so EI is not this EI, is that EI uh, of, and FI of UQ of, uh, LN. So here we only consider a finite dimensional uh, uh, GLN, so I, I will I from 1 to N minus 1. So it is, it is a coproduct, so it will be I, so in, in, the descript, in, in this description, we see that uh, EI acts on as k i tensor k i tensor i and uh, you sum over the position so this is the coproduct and similarly for uh, for f i you put the k i inverse or two on the other side and, uh, and, and, then, and then you have to translate this into an action here. And here, uh, the action can be expressed in terms of fermions. Then you have the fermions psi. So, right. so, so, so here we have, again, some basis theta i r, which is the tensor product of basis. It was a notation yesterday, capital N, small n, for the two uh, subalgebras of the tensor W. And then we can define again uh, some corresponding fermionic operator, psi IR and psi IR star, with the communication relations. The Cartesian communication relations. And then in this notation, we will have that, where is it written? 
sorry, it will be that uh, EI is equal to sum of um, KI KI1 so product sorry, product R equal to 1 to I minus 1 of KI R. So KI R are the corresponding Q to the number operators of I. So I'm rewriting this formula in uh, terms. So you have C I, C I, so I have C I. Um, so I don't have my notes, so I will be confused. Ah, here it is, yes. <coughs> small n. Sorry for the confusion. You should call it s and s. Okay. R and s are known to gl small n. Uh, R i i plus 1 r. And similarly for, for For Fi, and uh, and then the generators of, uh, <coughs> and then you have uh, U, UQ of GLN as generators. Let me call them cap with capital letters, in the, maybe in contradiction with the notation capital N, small n. But uh, it's better. Yeah generators of maybe capital T i in the GLN case and and they act as E i equal to sum or E r to a cons more consistent notation E r will be sum over i equal to 1 to capital N product of k J R J from one to uh, I minus one, and then here you have the psi I R plus one. Okay, so this is uh, the kind of the, what the translation, kind of concrete translation. So there are two stars? Or? No, two stars, yes. Thank you. Uh, of this rule here that you, you use the isomorphism and you act with a diagonal action. On each of the factors you act with this representation that I described here. And, uh, and then you get this formula. And, but, but these fermions allow you to express everything in terms of operators acting on the common space. And, uh, and then you can check that the actions commute. Right. I mean, they honestly commute. They don't Q commute. They just honestly they commute. Because they are even, right? Right, so let me uh, explain a special case. So the, the, the special case we are interested in is when we have two factors, and uh, uh, because we, uh, we would like to discuss the R matrix for, for the exterior powers of the vector representations, and, and then one can kind of retranslate it in more explicit. Uh, 
terms, so special case, uh, small n equal to 2, then you have an action of uq of, of gl2, on the second factor, and, uh, and so the action, so corollary, so the action of uq of sln on uh, wedge tensor wedge V commutes with the, uh, the following actions. UQ of GL2 action. So here we have uh, generators EF, T and T inverse. So K will be T1 and T2, T1 over T2, and uh, so E acts as sum product J equal 1 to I minus 1. I, I, I write it as tensor in the tensor presentation. Psi and uh, Psi I star. And there is a little minus if you write it this way here, yeah, but I can go into the details. But. And, uh, and F maps to plus some product Psi I star. I, I product J equal to I plus 1 to N of Ti inverse F J inverse. So this is a translation of, of this uh, same fact. And uh, one inspiration of our work came from a work of, of uh, Andrei Zirnov, who computed the, the R matrix for young Jens on the tensor product of, of exterior representations and express it in term of fermionic terms and these kind of products of psi appeared there. So th this is a translation, so, for, so there you had kind of psi, the minus sign comes to from the fact that we actually had psi i star on the first factor and psi i on the second factor in the other ordering and so if you rewrite it in this way Okay, so this is uh, sorry, I have I here have a TJ and here TJ because this is the action of, of K on the Okay, so this is uh, one thing and then uh, I would like to say something about R matrices, how to compute R matrices for this uh, product. And, and the end result will be that these R matrices can be rewritten in kind of transparent way in terms of uh, this action of QQ of SL2. And, and then I will explain the relation to uh, dynamic albide groups. Right, so, so, so computation of R, R matrices. So this is due to that your card in the 90s, I think. And they used uh, a technique which is called uh, uh, um, fusion. I think it's due to Reshetikin, Kirill of Reshetikin. So the method, which is really the quasi triangularity. The 
Jak mi narodził w tych widok. Probably you saw that people were involved in the that school. It's the old story. So you, you the fact that uh, uh, the R matrices uh, on tensor products can be computed by this quasi-triangularity uh, condition. And, uh, and so let me exa explain it in one example, because it's easier. So first of all, you start. So here we use the, uh, the description A for to that. As a quotient of the tensor product of representation. Uh, here, so you have k equal 1, k prime equal to 2. Then you first consider uh, the R matrix for uh, V of uh, Z and, uh, and the tensor product. So Z, W, inverse W. And this by the positive angularity, you know that it is a tensor product of R matrices. Mm -hmm. And it will be R13 Q inverse Z over W, R12 Q Z over W. Mm -hmm. And then you want to say that uh, uh, this really is well defined on the quotient. By, by, the, by this uh, sub, sub module. So, so it, it's, uh, it, it follows from the theory of uh, you know, R, R, RLL relations. So there is an abstract uh, way to prove that, but, but it is also clear from the Young Baxter equation. So, the more concrete version of, of, of to see that is that the Young Baxter equation implies that this R preserves. The, uh, the, the image of R12 of, uh, of, of Q square, whatever it was, it was Q square, I think, or Q, and and so which is which is the thing you quotient by, so it is well defined with the sense to a well defined operator on. Uh, Vz of V W. Okay. And this is the way uh, that Okade computed it, but of course it's very complicated. There are still a couple of tricks to, to be used. And one trick is to exploit the, uh, G, the finite dimensional GLN or SLN invariants. Yeah. So, Namely, the, you, if, so you have, let's look at the SLN uh, R hat commutes in particular with the finite dimension subalgebra. And then, uh, so we learn how to decompose the tensor product. Reducible. It's not. It's irreducible for generic Z and W for the uh, the whole algebra. But if you restrict to it, you have a different position. And the uh, and so let me copy what it is. We learned it how, how to do it yesterday with with the how duality. So it is something like this. And here you have uh, the fundamental weights k plus k prime times i times i, whatever they are, so they correspond to these young diagrams, this type, and times a multiplicity space. And we know that multiplicity spaces are weight spaces for GL2 representation, namely the given by the transposed uh, uh, diagram. 
But these are one dimensional because uh, in irreducible SL2 representations or GL2 representations, the weight spaces are one dimension. So we, can feel, so we have simple spectrum in this sense. And then, uh, and so it means that if we have a, a high straight vector, namely a generator of this sub high straight sub representation, it should be mapped by the R check matrix to another high straight vector of the same weight. And there is only one up to constant, so, so you get constraints on this, uh, on this uh, uh, R matrix, and you compute only finitely many, as many as there are some coefficients. Okay, so this is, say, generated by W, K depends on K and K prime and I, the index of this representation. And so what they said is that, right, so that you have that this R check matrix, let me call it KK prime, abbreviate for these two uh, representations of Z, applied to WKK prime, is rho <coughs> scalar function times W I k prime k of the same weight. Turns out the same weight. And, 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 then, uh, and then you have to, this is purely uh, uh, the commutation with the finite dimensional Lie algebra. And then uh, with the fusion procedure, you, you can compute what those coefficients are. They will some recursion relation, they solve them. We must give the final formula because we translated that formula into in different language. So I don't know. I think now this is the only method to compute this R matrix. Maybe there is better method. So we get an our kind of simpler formula, a more transparent formula, and which could we should probably be derived directly, not using this story here. But. Uh, in principle, you could get it from the universal R matrix. Yeah, but, but the, the problem in the universal R matrix is that there is a formula of Roshkin and uh, Pakulyak probably, but it's an infinite product and it converges actually most of the time, but it's impossible to compute it with that formula. And also, the, the, it's an infinite product whose coefficients are defined by some recursion relation, <laughs> which is a little complicated. So I think this is the only method that exists now. Of course, when you know the answer, you can check that it commutes with the diagonal action. So, so, so translated, so the result is uh, translated in fermionic terms. The following one, that, uh, or, uh, is the uh, check k prime. This is for k, I think, k prime or equal. k prime minus k, z divided by 1 minus q. So the These are not important, but I write it because I have a couple of remarks. So I don't know, in terms of uq of gl2, really. Uh, uh, e to the power, so f, probably f, k prime minus k plus j, e j. Uh, let me, I should still define something. This parenthesis is the dividing power. So, in that I don't have much more to say. I think I will finish more or less in time. So 
to uh, Ej is e to the power j divided by q factorial rather universal notation and uh, construction that we use in this business. So, uh, so the remarks is that so one nice feature of this uh, of this way of writing the formula is that the poles are we identify the residues of the poles. In this other expression of uh, that, uh, where the, where the coefficients are kind of it's a sum of the, the coefficients are found with these many poles. But here we isolate the, the it's a sum of simple poles and the coefficients is identified with these SM2 expressions. The second remark is that actually this is some sort of universal formula in the sense that you can really think of this Q to the K prime minus K that we evaluate in some product representations with powers K and K prime. You can really also write as, as a, T to the T1 to the K prime, T2 to the K in terms of Carton generators of, of your case instead of and the third observation is that when n goes to infinity, so that you can formally take the limit n goes to infinity, the coefficients have no n dependence. So you can really consider the, the Fox space and, and as a GL infinity uh, representations, you have to, uh, to, to have that well defined, the sum well defined, you have to uh, fill the Dirac vacuum, introduce normal ordering, but basically you can the R matrix in the infinite uh, uh, n. Okay, so this is uh, found, and let me explain the relation now to the dynamical Weyl group. The, the claim is that this is really generator of the dynamical Weyl group, quantum dynamical Weyl group, and this is a story of uh, started with Tarasov. Barchenko, who did the, the classical case, Q equal to 1, mostly algebra, but, but the most general story was in Etting of Barchenko. So this is around 2000, uh, this is 2002, uh, where they did it for any Lie algebras and so on. And, uh, in that, that construction quantum. It has also some prehistory in representation theory, this story. It's, it's called, uh, you know, but later I have no idea, it's Jerobenko extremal projectors. Right, so it's a quantum uh, group, dynamical vial group. So, uh, so what they do is they construct, so suppose you have a representation, uh, V, finite dimensional representation of UQ of G. It will be a little more general. So G is a simple Lie algebra. And, uh, and so, uh, and then you have W is uh, uh, the Weyl group. So in our case, it is a symmetric group Sn, and, and this is Sln. And uh, now, so what they do is, uh, so you have some weight space decomposition. In the weight lattice, weight space decomposition. So again, values of the Cartan. And so what they do is they construct, uh, so if we construct operators uh, A lambda, depending on a complex, uh, 
depending on some complex variables lambda, and an element of the group, of the vial group, so here W is in the, in the vial group, and lambda is in the complexified, is in the, in the dual of the carton subalgebra. And, uh, and, and these operators map the weight, so they are look like the vial lift of the vial group, they map uh, a, a weight space V mu to the reflected weight space. And, uh, and they have the following uh, condition. Uh, so this is really defined, so it depends on choices, so, so it's, it's really defined in the corresponding braid group. And they have the property that A, W1, W2 of lambda is equal to A, W1, W2 lambda, A, W2 lambda. Some co-cycle condition, but this only if, uh, if the length of the product is equal to uh, the sum of lengths. So for the symmetric group, the length is a minimal number of, of transpositions that you need to write the, your your, your So in particular, this will obey some uh, Young-Baxter equation in the LN case. And, uh, and here, uh, also here, right, here we will have a Young-Baxter equation. Maybe I will finish in a second. Uh, but, but how to interpret the Young-Baxter equation for this matrix here. So recall that we are considering the R matrix for uh, wedge V, tensor wedge V. The Young-Baxter equation will take place in wedge V, tensor wedge V, tensor V, wedge V. On that space, we have an action of GL3. And so uh, the Young-Baxter equation in this setting will be, again, the usual R, R, R equal to R, R, R. But the, the R's, R12, R23, R12, corresponds to different embedding of SL2 into, into SL3. OK, so for each uh, simple root, you have an embedding. And, um, and that's uh, the way to understand the Young-Baxter equation. It is also the way to understand the Young-Baxter equation. So the claim will be that uh, the R so, OK, let me, let me say. So the claim is that the SL2 case, this and the non-trivial element of the Y group will correspond to this R matrix here. But to tell the truth, I, I didn't, the formula is different there. It's in different terms, so I haven't checked it, but I'm sure it is true. And um, so, but the construction of this is, uh, is interesting. It's a different construction from that. It goes like this, that you consider uh, Verma modules. Lambda is, uh, is this lambda here. And uh, so you consider intertwining operators. So if you have intertwining operators, so homomorphism of, of representations, intertwined. So the intertwiners are in one-to-one -one correspondence with vectors in V in the uh, difference of weight spaces. Namely, it, there is a unique uh, intertwiner which sends the highest weight vector to uh, the highest weight vector tensor V uh, plus uh, terms of different degree. So this is the, the, the term of highest degree in the first factor. And so there is a unique, for generic lambda, there is a unique such intertwine. And, uh, uh, and then the construction of those A's operator.
So in the Verma modules, you have these singular vectors, right, or primitive vectors, whatever. So it's not irreducible in general, if lambda is a, is a dominant way. And, uh, and so you have such uh, vectors. So, so for each, and they are labeled by a group of elements, we have a singular vector. Lambda and and the, and the uh, weight is the star action of, of of lambda. This is the weight of the singular vector. I will not have time to give details, but for each element of the Bell group, you have a, a sub representation, a sub Verma module, and um, and then uh, so now you define a, a lambda. is defined by sending that singular vector, high straight vector, primitive vector, <coughs> is mapped again to a primitive vector in mu of the same, uh, uh, with the same group element, times, times A lambda of D, plus terms of, 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 of lower degree. And so this defines lambda, if you, uh, if you take lambda, all possible lambdas, it uniquely defines some meromorphic function of lambda. And, and so, so our claim is that this A S lambda is equal to R, that universal R of lambda, uh, the spectral parameter lambda. Okay, so this is uh, the end of the story. Thank you. So when you look at three copies, then you have three of three. So then this uh, decomposition is not one dimensional anymore, right? Because field three, there are always places needn't be one dimensional. Does it somehow appear anywhere? Or is it, I mean, if I understood you correctly, you looked at two factors first, and then you used it uh, T, and you say the, the weight spaces are TL2 representations, and they're all <laughs> so you get the primitive decomposition, whereas for three copies, Right. You'll get multiplicity spaces. So somehow there should be some non trivial action on this multiplicity space. Is this? You don't quite see this here because when you write the Young Master equation, you write So the R matrices for higher representations are given in terms of. So the Young Master equation is the product of the R. So it sort of comes up. Explicitly, but you don't. You never see this explicitly. Yeah, and it's a little the same in uh, in this quantum dynamical wide group. So if you know the SL two R matrix, and sorry, the SL two A construct by this rule, and also yeah, by embedding SL two any the algebra corresponding to you can get all these A's. Yes. This formula resembles Lustig's definition of the ordinary quantum while group, so that probably works for every uh, simple algebra. Right. The, the only, so, so there is this, uh, a quantum while group of Lustig and Feuerbach and Lustig. And this appears in the limit, in some limit when lambda goes to infinity or zero. It is analog to the fact that our matrices of the final dimension are the algebra T has limits of the R matrices when the spectral parameter goes to infinity. Any other questions? If not, let us thank Giovanni and all our speakers again. Thank you to Elise for this excellent organization.